Faith with Heather Murdoch. Good morning. Welcome to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm so happy to be with you today. I'm just really excited today. I have such a great show. I cannot wait to tell you the story about how this show came to be. And uh, first of all, I want to welcome you. If you're a first-time viewer, thank you so much for tuning in today. And I think you'll just be delighted with today's show and just in general to watch Love, Hope, and Faith. This is, this is a sh I can't talk. This is a show that is all about Jesus and how Jesus changes lives and how he redeems and how he saves and how he is the one true hope in this world. And, you know, so many times we look for hope in things and people and relationships. We look for hope in food. We look for hope maybe in alcohol. We look for hope and relief in all kinds of uh, maybe shopping. There's all kinds of things that people put their hope in or they put their, um, or they, or they, um, they, they seek to give them comfort. And I have found in my life that the only comfort, the only peace truly does come from having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, if you're not in a relationship with him, I encourage you to, to allow him into your life. And I promise you, um, you will be blessed. And, um, and it's, it's amazing when you have um, a relationship with him. It, it transcends anything that you could be going through. And uh, like I said, he's the one true hope. No matter where you've been, there's hope in Jesus. And uh, I want to share with you, last night, I actually sometimes booking this show, you know, I have a full-time job. This is my ministry. And, um, you know, I, I book the guests and... You know that that's my that's my responsibility, and sometimes it's hard. You know, finding guests and, and and being a mom and and having a career and trying to make it all happen. And and once in a while, I have um, an incident where maybe a guest can't make it or last minute changes, and I'm scrambling. And and uh, so yesterday was actually one of those days. And um, so last night I was going to a church down in Rockland to give my testimony at a Celebrate Recovery down there. And um, on the way there, I'm, I'm praying. I'm like, okay, God, I don't have a guest for tomorrow. I need to call Sue and let her know that we're going to have to do a rerun. And I'm like, and all of a sudden I had this feeling, like this powerful feeling that I should not do that. And I was praying, and I'm like, okay, God, maybe there's going to be someone at that Celebrate Recovery that's supposed to be on my show. And I'm thinking it's too fantastic to even think about that because... You know, like literally, I'm in Rockland, and who's going to come all the way up to Amador County um, the night before a show and be on TV? You know, but I literally had this strong sense that I needed to not call Sue, that I needed to wait, that there was someone waiting that had to be on my show. So I get to the Celebrate Recovery, and there's this worship team there, and they're from a youth group or a group called a YWAM, and we're going to I'm going to talk tell you what that's about in a minute but um, so they get introduced and they're just in town for a short time and all of a sudden I feel God nudging me like yes they're supposed to be on your show I'm not kidding guys it was so powerful so after the show I went up or after the uh, after the worship I went up to them and I said okay guys I have a crazy idea and um, and I just boldly I felt so bold because I knew that God was encouraging me that these people were supposed to be on my show today and it's just crazy enough that's the kind of God we serve he's such a fantastic amazing God and I and I went up to them and, and ran the idea by them and they are here today there's four young adults from YWAM and I have Maria and Stevie hi guys hi. hey good to have you Thank you. I'm so excited to share the story. Wasn't it cool? Yeah. <laughs> what did you think about last night when I when I came up to you and said you have to be on my show? What did you think? It's a shock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You look like you're like, huh? <laughs> like tomorrow morning? Yes. No time to prepare or anything. But mm -hmm. um, but that sometimes that's how God works, doesn't He? Yeah. yeah. And we and all felt like we were supposed to do it. Yeah. So it was just such a cool moment. We were like, yeah. We're supposed to do it. Yeah, and I'm telling you, I've never, ever been in a situation where the night before, I'm still, you know, I, I'm, I'm that sure that I'm going to meet that person that night to be on my show. It really was a God thing. I know it was. So thank you so much for your obedience to him and for being here. Oh, so, no problem. So I want to find out what, what is YWAM. A lot of people may not know that. Let's go there first. Okay, so YWAM is uh, Youth with a Mission yeah. is what it stands for. And um, YWAM is a international and interdenominational or, uh, missions organization. Okay. Um, so we actually have over 1,100 um, YWAM locations. Yeah. Um, in over 180 countries. Wow. Wow. Um, with a staff population of more than 18,000. Wow. Are you staff? Yes. Are well, you? Are you? We, yeah. we were. <laughs> okay. Before okay. It this season. Okay. <laughs> and you've been, t you've been, I will say, touring or serving, is it serving? Serving of the YWAM for what? Five years? Five said. years, and yes. And you've been two or three? Three. Three, okay. And you're from? 
Sweden. Sweden, I love it. You got the beautiful Swedish blonde hair. <laughs> <laughs> and you're from Virginia. Virginia. Yes. Okay. Good. So this is a global ministry that mm -hmm. equips, right? Yes. How does it equip you? Um, it depends on how far you really you go yeah. in missions. Um, the first program you can do in YWAM is called a discipleship training school. Yeah. Oh, um, awesome. And our our foundational logo, I guess you would say, for YWAM is to know God and to make Him known. Yeah. And so the discipleship yes. training yes. school, you spend three months um, knowing God. Mm -hmm. You find out um, who God is, um, how He speaks to you, mm -hmm. um, who you are in God, your identity, yes. um, and all these so things. Powerful. And then you go for two to three months overseas or in some outreach location um, letting God be known around yeah. the world and sharing what you learned in those past couple months. And that's cool because that's kind of what this show's about. So it's, mm -hmm. you're kind of doing YWAM work right here, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about, um, you know, tell me about uh, the requirements or how you get into the program. Are there any requirements? Just that you finished high school. <laughs> yeah, okay, okay, good. Does it cost? Uh, yes. Okay. It depends on where you are yeah. and the cost of living and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so it just varies, mm -hmm. and then your outreach will be how wherever you go. <laughs> Can you raise money like missionaries do to to be able to yes. afford all that? Is that YWAM, what you do? YWAM is a friendship based support system. Okay, and so we actually raise money from friends and family and things like that. So I actually have monthly supporters from Virginia, yeah, uh, from Colorado. Okay. Um, just all over the place. And you guys have known each other since September of 2013? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. And you guys, you all seem like you're so, because there's two others that are going to be on the show later today, um, but you guys all seem so close. I know you sang last night in the in the worship, you worshiped for us last night, and wow, you guys are really talented. I was so moved by your <laughs> singing and your playing. It was really beautiful. You guys seem like you've been together for a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. Couple months. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Did you enjoy the, your experience yes, with YWAM? Very How much. has it changed you? Wow. <laughs> I know that's the wow. question, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I mean, I've been more secure mm -hmm. in who I am, mm -hmm. and you know, all insecurity that you can walk around carrying mm -hmm. in everyday life. Yes. That's like gone because yeah. Jesus is just keep pouring in to you, like who you are, your true identity, and like who He created you to be. Amen. I so. Love it. That's the biggest change, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, were you? Uh, did you grow up in a Christian home? Yes. I okay. Did. Okay. So I always like to ask this question. I, I prepared you guys that I would ask this. I'm going to ask each of you. When did you know? Especially for many times, you know, you grow up as a Christian, and you kind of just that's just what you do. Your family goes to church, and you may not have had a real personal experience with Jesus yet. So, have you had that? And if so, what was it? So, <clears throat> I got saved when I was, I think it was 9 or 13, mm -hmm. I'm unsure what age, but okay. it was during a summer camp, mm -hmm. and we had this devotional time in the evening, and it was after the devotional time, and everybody left the tent, but I just couldn't leave. I was like shaking, I was crying, my heart was beating so hard, but I had no idea what was going on. Mm -hmm. And so as, as, as I was sitting there, my pastor comes down to me and he asks, like, How, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I have no idea. <laughs> he was like, I believe that Jesus is knocking on your door. Oh, my God. The door to your heart. Chills. Yeah. So he was like, do you want to invite him in? And I was like, yes, yes, I mm -hmm. want to. Mm -hmm. So since then, yeah. Wow, that's beautiful. <clears throat> I hear so many times that summer camp has been pivotal for many kids, mm -hmm. you know, that they've had those Jesus moments. How about for you, Stevie? Well, I grew up with amazing, amazing Christian parents. Um, mm -hmm. We would just study the Bible every night pretty much together as wow. a family. Um, and they taught me so much about God. But it wasn't until I was probably 15 mm -hmm. that it really, really hit me of who God really was. Mm -hmm. um, and it was just a moment where the normal teenage life just starts getting to you and um, this period where I just felt like I was alone. Yeah. And even though I wasn't, I didn't feel like I could talk to anybody, mm -hmm. wasn't opening up, and I just felt, felt very alone. <laughs> yeah. And, um, and one night I just was sitting in my room, and I always laugh because 
of all the times my parents told, just drilled it into us, always go to God without even thinking about it. I just go to God about everything mm -hmm. that's going on without even realizing it. Yeah. And then in that moment, I physically heard God vo God's voice. Wow. And he's just like, I'm here for you. Wow. And I will listen to you. Amen. And from that moment on, I just realized that I couldn't, I couldn't sta stand it without him. Right. That I needed him. So, and that was the moment that it was just for me, it was just like, I, you're real. <laughs> yes. Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Amen. It reminds me of the scripture that says that um, God is close to the brokenhearted. And mm -hmm. I praise him that you experience that aloneness because it's through that time. I mean, unfortunately, many of us have to go through really hard times to really turn to God, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he's right there. You know, he's there in the good times too, but it seems like it takes the hardness. It takes the pain to really draw us in, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. So I want to talk to you guys. We're actually, I mean, the time goes by so quickly. Um, we're going to be going to break in a minute. But I want to find out when we, when we return, what are some of the challenges? Well, I want to find out more about what you've learned through YWAM specifically. Mm -hmm. But I also want to talk about some of the challenges. You guys are both in your, what, early 20s probably? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want to find out what's it like in the culture of your generation um, to have faith. And how, is the faith carry, how has your faith carried you through? What, what challenges have you faced? Um, what do you think of the next gen of, of your generation in terms of our relationship with, with Jesus? And How's that shaping up? So be thinking about that when we go to break. Those are some good questions. And uh, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Stay tuned to Love, Hope, and Faith. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. You're watching your local television network, TSPN. And now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. My name is Heather Murdoch, and I'm here with Stevie and Maria. And Stevie, I wanted to ask you first, what you know? How has YWAM, the experience of it, changed you? Because I know it's so missional. You're out there serving. How has that changed you in your faith? Big question. <laughs> yeah, it is. I know. Um, I'd probably say that the biggest thing that's affected my life is kind of like what Maria was saying, just the fact that you figure out who you are in God. Mm -hmm. I mean, just all the teachings you go through and how in-depth you look into your identity and really looking at how God sees you. Mm -hmm. um, that was has always been, no matter how many times I go through it, it's always affecting me in different ways. And um, I would definitely say that's the biggest thing for me, mm -hmm. just realizing that God has called me to be somebody. Yeah. And yes. that, um, and even with the fact that I'm only 23 years old, like mm -hmm. it doesn't matter how old I am, that I can do it. Like with God on my side, I can do it. I love it. And it reminds me of the scripture, uh, Psalm 139, which I've been studying this week, uh, that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. All your works are wonderful. I know that full well. And you guys are his works. We are his works. And all his works are wonderful. And then it goes on to talk about the days that are ordained and written in his book. And that goes to purpose, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, we all have a purpose. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, he made us for a definite um, purpose and intentional we we're intentionally made and I think it's so huge for kids to know that because a lot of kids are struggling aren't they mm -hmm. what are some of the yeah. struggles that kids face today that you guys have had to face yourselves I would say not feeling like you can do anything right mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. like a lot of the time it's kind of built in that you have to wait until you're in your late 20s yes. to really be any effect to anybody yeah mm. Um, and I've seen that in my own life. I've seen it in working with youth. Mm -hmm. It's just this feeling of, oh, I can't do anything yet. Yeah. Um, and just that's what I love about YWAMBs. It's just like we're sending 16, 17-year-olds out. Mm. I love it. To preach the gospel. Amen. Love it. And love also it. insecurities, I think. A lot of insecurities. Mm -hmm. Like people are searching for acceptance mm -hmm. and love, mm -hmm. but they are searching in the wrong areas in life yes and until you realize that you have to look for those things in God mm -hmm. that's when you really get satisfied absolutely and I think the struggle is to to feel accepted because people look at they look for acceptance in people mm -hmm. but yes 
Yeah, because the tangible, because you can feel a mm -hmm. person, you know, like, oh, well, I can, I, you know, I, I hear that from people. Well, God's not here, he's invisible, and mm -hmm. I can't feel him, I need to have arms around me, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's a big challenge to overcome that. Yeah. How do you, how do you encourage young, young people to, to accept Jesus? Wow. <laughs> it's just, it's a good thing to get your best friend. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Jesus really is my best friend. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There is, you know, you have this picture of a, the perfect friend. The one who never leaves you, the one who never lies to you, the one who never turns your, her back to you, or that kind of things. Right. Like, Jesus never does that. Right. He's yeah, the yes. perfect friend. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I think it's a very relational thing, mm -hmm. is what a lot of people our age and younger want. Like, we want to know that God isn't just some... God up in the sky is like looking down on us, but mm. that He wants to be with us. Yes. That He's our friend. He's our father. Yes. Yeah. Our daddy. In fact, lately, mm -hmm. I know that seems kind of funny to call dad that. I, I mean, God that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, dad, he's dad too. But um, lately, he's been challenging me to call him daddy because I didn't mm -hmm. really have that kind of relationship with my own father. Mm -hmm. And so it's, he's teaching me right now how to be more vulnerable. And when you call him daddy, it's like, that's really vulnerable because you're like, mm. so it's like being a little child in his presence, you know. And it's not awesome that he can be so many things to us. Yeah. You know, like you said, best friend, God, dad, you know, um, counselor, encourager, you know, all those things. Um, what do you think about your generation and, and where faith is amongst the, the, young, the young adults? I think it's a generation full of just let's do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. attitude mm -hmm. basically that we whenever we like grasp the truth of something mm -hmm. that we're just gonna go for it mm -hmm. and really search it out and then yeah just go for yeah. it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we have noticed that a lot lately especially with the work we're doing mm -hmm. it's a lot more just like just go for it like she said mm -hmm. yeah like there is um, doubt mm -hmm. in a lot of the generation and we want, but the thing is, we're, this generation is searching a lot. Yes. And searching for something that is real, something that actually makes sense. Mm -hmm. Something, I think that's a key word. I always hear that. You know, kids want realness. Mm -hmm. They don't want to hear a bunch of, you know, nice words. They want to have, they want to know what's real and the truth, you know, searching for the truth. I think that's huge. Yeah. yeah and, it's all, and that boils back down to the relationship aspect. I always say it's not about the religion. It's about the relationship. Mm -hmm. That's what changes us, totally. yeah, totally. you know, for sure. So where do you guys, you, you mentioned the work you're doing. So is that the worship leading? Is that what you guys do in your service with YWAM? This yeah. quarter, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, like since September, we've been with the Elevate School of Worship uh -huh. out of Kona, Hawaii. Yeah. And right. that's how we all got together and how yeah. why we're in California. Mm -hmm. um, before that, I spent two years um, working with YWAM Ships out of Kona, which is focused on sending teams on these ships to the isolated islands in the Pacific, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, bringing Mercy Ministries, um, medical missions, um, and Bible teachers to Great. these little islands that can't be reached by any other way than by boat. Yes. Oh, that's so awesome. So there's, with so many locations and so many different ministries, you have people covering every area. Yeah. Of every sphere of influence. So you guys have been to many places, obviously, in your time with YWAM. Have you found that people are pretty much people, regardless yeah. of where you go? <laughs> yeah. What's yeah. that been like? It has been amazing mm -hmm. to realize that everybody is the same. Mm -hmm. And it's also amazing to get God's heart when you go to... We both have been in Uganda, oh, wow. for example. And wow. it's just amazing to get God's heart for the Ugandan people mm -hmm. to see they have nothing yes. materialistic wise but yes. if you look at their lives they're so full of joy they're yeah. so happy mm -hmm. so like ah oh, th yeah. it's such a difference like to look at people in this kind of world yes and see yeah. we're so spoiled here 
you Some know oil. yeah yes. that's a problem it's a major problem mm -hmm. yeah and you know I think that we uh, you know it's so easy as believers to stay within our within our comfort zone mm -hmm. and to stay with other believers you know um, and it's so important that we reach out you know and that's what mm -hmm. you guys are doing and it's so great to learn that at such a young age to go really spread the gospel the Great Commission you know go spread the gospel to the ends of the earth you know mm -hmm. and the fact that you guys are just average guy average kids well your kids <laughs> to me <laughs> average young people right do you feel that way it's yes. like God can use the most average life and just make it something amazing and and so impacting mm -hmm. you know so how would you do you do you guys go speak to other kids about getting involved with YOM do you guys sometimes yeah um, sometimes some of us will get invited to a church or a youth group or something like that yeah most of the I mean for me at least most of the time it's just talk hanging out talking to people and Telling them my my experience. Yeah, good. So, where do you see yourself after you get done with YWAM? <laughs> where do you think God's leading in your lives? What are you going to be when you grow up? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah. Okay, Yet that's okay. Out. That's okay. Yeah. That's good. You're just open. Yeah. That's good. How about you, Stevie? Yeah. Um, kind of like what Maria said. It's kind of step by step, and I've realized over the past five years that a lot of the time God just gives you that one little step in front. Mm -hmm. and and then you figure out later what's going to happen. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long I'll be in YOM. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I've already been in for five years. I could be in for five, ten more years. Yeah. Um, but I definitely feel called to um, take and give young adults the opportunity like I've had mm -hmm. to go out into the world and to know God and to make Him known around the world. Yes. To just give people that opportunity mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. see what, what is out there. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And singing, because you sing, you play yes. the guitar. Mm -hmm. So is that something you want to pursue, or have you been doing that for a long time? Not for a very long time, yeah. but that's definitely something I want to pursue and something I want to walk towards. Yeah. Because that's the best place to be in mm. worship, just focusing on God and just get encounters with Him. It's well, I really, You really blessed me when you were singing because you really, I could tell you really were feeling His Spirit and you were really just, you were really worshiping just to Him. You weren't like... Well, not that performing is a bad thing, but you weren't performing. You were just really, I could tell you were in intimacy with him in that moment. That was really cool. So thank you for that. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's where it's all about. Leading people into that place of worship. Mm -hmm. What an honor to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, that's really huge. Yeah. So, so do you guys perform? Um, right now you're, you're uh, staying with, um, we should mention the church that you've been a part of the last couple of weeks, right? The, yes. the yes. Spring Valley Spring Valley Church, church yeah. in Rockland. And, um, and what were you doing there? We have been... Uh, leading worship in oh, okay. different, what do you call it? different ministries. meetings mm -hmm. and ministries. Mm -hmm. So celebrate recovery in their church service on Sunday. Yeah. Um, the, the youth, youth group. group. Yeah. And on Friday we're gonna have like a extended worship time where we're gonna have like just an hour, one and a half hour of worship mm -hmm. together with the whole church. Yeah. Great. And, yeah. Great. So. Um, do you, uh, it's non-denominational, right? Why WAM is non-denominational? Yeah, uh, yeah interdenominational. Or inter mm -hmm. Yeah, interdenominational. So it, all faiths are welcome. Mm -hmm. All Jesus faiths are all welcome. Jesus yeah, faith. yeah, <laughs> Christ-centered. Yeah, exactly. Um, so what about, um, I know I was going to ask you earlier, um, what do your parents and your families think about this? Oh, they must parents, miss you for one my thing. My parents love it. Yeah, they're proud of you. Yeah, they're actually joining <laughs> YWAM now. Oh, great. Oh, so it's not just for ki for young adults? No. Oh, okay. um, YWAM works with anybody oh, from wow, any okay. age. Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't realize My that. My parents um, just did their DTS uh, 2012. And how long is so. that program is that? Uh, the discipleship program. training school is five to six months. Okay. And what do you do? I mean, we only have like a minute left, but give me a little sample of what you do. Uh, how do they teach discipleship? Um, well, the first three months is a lot of um, lectures, usually. Yeah. Um, but you also have, you have a set program where you do lectures, where you're learning about God and identity and things like that. Um, you have set worship times yeah. of learning about intimacy with God through that That's way. It. That's the key. Um, you have intercession times where you're praying for the nations. Oh, I love um, it. And then for the two to three months, you're out serving con countries around the world. Yeah. That's wonderful. Discipleship is huge. Mm. I think that sometimes the church forgets about that aspect of it, or we haven't focused on that enough, is teaching people how to disciple, how to be discipled, but also how to disciple others. Because the mm. way that we're going to spread the gospel is through multiplying. 
you mm -hmm. know, um, and, and teaching others how to lead others to lead others. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I think that's mm -hmm. really important. <clears throat> so you guys have been great. I'm sorry, I got something in my throat now. Um, but you guys have been wonderful. Thank you for being on. Thank you for just jumping thank on you. board with this and, and just being so open. Oh, really appreciate thank you it. for inviting us. Yeah, yeah. thank you. And thank you for the work you're doing with YWAM. And it sounds like it's something that I, I'd like to look at that for my kids, you know, when they're older. So anyway, thank you again. And we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. And welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. And I have two new guests. We did a little quick change there. And I have Julia and Mariano. And you're from Argentina. Yes. Yes, it's so awesome. I have a little global show here today. I love it. And you're from Kentucky. Yes. Yeah, and Kentucky. you're with YWAM. And mm -hmm. the four of you guys, uh, like I shared in the beginning, I met you guys last night. But, you know, one thing I've noticed being a believer, when you meet other believers, we truly are brothers and sisters. Yeah. There's a connection like no other when you meet a fellow believers. So that, that's pretty odd. I feel like I already know you guys. So <laughs> thanks for being on today. So I want to find out, you know, like I asked them in the beginning, um, what your God moment has been in your life. Okay. So I'm going to start ladies first and ask you, when did Jesus, well, first of all, did you grow up as a believer? I did. I was raised in a Christian home mm -hmm. and brought up knowing about Jesus my whole life. Um, when I was about 18, I really started seeking God for myself mm -hmm. and I would go into my room and just pray and read my Bible and um, I remember one specific time where I really felt his presence mm -hmm. I would um, I was just reading the word and I was used to like worshiping God in a church setting but I had never worshiped him on my own like by myself and so I was like okay well so I just started singing to God, like my heart, and praising Him. And I remember that I, I got chills on my body, and I was like, whoa. And it, it wasn't because of me singing. It was because I felt the presence of God. Yes. And I was like, oh, my goodness, this is amazing. So I would, like, keep going back into my room, and just I had, like, this kind of secret relationship with Him. And um, I just would remember singing to him and like feeling his presence and I loved it and so that was like when I first started to fall in love with Jesus mm -hmm. um, going to YWAM also had a big part of played a big part of it mm -hmm. um, just because it was it's such an amazing experience getting to do missions and go to different cultures and experience the father's heart for people yeah Mm -hmm. um, so that played a big part. Um, also, when I got back from YWAM, I I was having trouble just like feeling him and uh, having that tangibility that I had. Mm -hmm. um, and so I just remember like crying out to God, going in my room, getting on my knees, and praying and saying, "God, like, where are you? What's going on?" And I went to a worship and prayer meeting one night and one of the guys there starts just like praying over me and then he starts like prophesying over me and calling out like the things that I had been asking God mm. and like naming specific things that I had prayed mm. and like what the Lord was responding to me mm. and I was just like oh my goodness because at that moment I knew for sure that like God heard everything that I prayed mm. and nothing was overlooked and so I was just like fell in love with, I kept falling in love with God and seeing his face in a new light. And it's just been like nonstop since then, my pursuit of him. Mm, so, I yeah, love it. That's so beautiful, going. Julia. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's amazing. I have goosebumps too. <laughs> How about you? Well, for me, it was easy too. Well, first of all, let me know if you don't understand my English. <laughs> okay, got to my ear in yeah. so carefully. <laughs> yes. Um, You're doing good though. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so yeah, it was easy for me. I was raised in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. When I was 12, my mom told me, okay, you're old enough to decide if you want to keep going to church or if you want to stay. And how old were you? At this? Uh, right now? No, when she said that. 12. Okay, okay. So I was, for me, church was bored. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. And so I stopped going to church, but I was a kid mm -hmm. also, so it wasn't like I didn't do anything bad. I was right. just, but I knew that I was walking away from God and going, running away from God. And I knew what I was doing. So when I was 15, I knew that I was going to be a loser, like <laughs> without God. <laughs> <laughs> I, I knew I was like, okay, I know God has plans, He had plans for me. I know He, he has plans for me. And if I'm, if not, I'm not following Him, I'm going to be a loser. Like the rest of my life, and it's going to be a mistake. After all the mistake and mistake, mistake. So I knew it. So I said, okay, God, I made my own decision. I want to follow you. I know you have plans for me. And I wanna, I want to fulfill those those plans. So I was 15 when I made that decision. Wow. wow. And from there, it was just growing and growing and growing my relationship with him. And yeah, and it got better and better. Um. Yeah, till now I keep I keep going. <laughs> That's the cool thing about God is that there's always more. Yeah. You never oh, get yeah. to the okay. Well, this is as good as it's gonna get. It, there's always more. Oh yeah. There's always more. Totally. It just keeps us just running after Him. I love when you said pursuing Him. Yeah. So what I and I meant to ask the other two as well. So I'll ask you two. Um, first, I'll start with you. How did you get into YWAM? Um, my mom knew about it through, I think, one of my brother's friends. Mm-hmm. And so I kind of started searching it online, and I loved traveling because I'd been on a couple mission trips to Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. And I was trying to decide about going to college, and then I saw YWAM online, and I really just felt drawn to it. Mm -hmm. And I felt God saying that college wasn't what He wanted me to do, mm -hmm. which was kind of a shock for me because... All my friends were doing that, and that seemed just like the right thing to do. Yeah, the, the natural next, thing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. um, so I went to YWAM, and I, yeah, I didn't so much fall in love with the organization, but I fell in love with um, a life lived by faith mm -hmm. and a life completely surrendered to God. Yes. Yes. Like not saying, no, God, I want to do this going with his plan and mm -hmm. saying yes to him. Kind of like being was, here today. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so much more surprises. Yeah, exactly. He's full of surprises. Yeah, so that was how I got So involved. you're okay. And your parents are thrilled? Um, yeah. I mean, they they definitely support me, mm -hmm. and they love that I'm pursuing Jesus. So. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's such, such a blessing. Yeah. Oh, my gosh, yes. How about you? How'd you get into it? Well... And I did my first school with YWAM in 2004 in Argentina. Mm -hmm. And I went to South Africa. Like, my sister did it before. Okay. And I, and I didn't like it that much, YWAM. Mm -hmm. But I was okay, like... What didn't you like about it? I don't know, like... <laughs> it's like for me, they, they were weird. <laughs> Put you on the spot. <laughs> <laughs> for me, like, because my sister went, she did the same school, and... I don't know, for me it was like, I don't, I don't understand this. Like, was it too like over the top for you? Yeah, it, it was too? weird. Okay. I, uh, yeah, it was weird. I was like, I don't know if I like this. But I knew that a lot of uh, people from all over the world were like, go to the school, so I, I like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, okay, let's try it. Okay, so I yeah. went to YWAM and I went, for my outreach, I went to South Africa. Mm -hmm. And it was great. It was amazing. But I didn't like it that much. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> so I went, I was the worship pastor in my church and the youth group leader. So I went back after my outreach, this like the five months first school, I went back to my church. Mm -hmm. um, and it was great. And it was in 2012 well, when I saw the school of worship in Kona, Hawaii. And I felt like I was calling, I felt like God told me, okay, I want you to take you to Hawaii. I was like, okay, that sounds good. Like, yeah. I, I mean, if you're going to do that, yeah. I, I, not a bad deal. I, yeah, I mean, so I started first, because first, the only thing that I knew was Hawaii. So I didn't know, like, okay, what I'm going to do in Hawaii. So I started to Google, okay, what can I do in Hawaii? And I saw University of Nations. And because I did that school, like my first school in 2004, I was able to do this secondary school, okay. the School of Worship. Yeah. So that's how I... Okay, I, and, and, and you're, you're good with it now. You feel like it's where you're supposed to be. Well, I did my school for you last year, mm -hmm. but I mean, 2012. Mm -hmm. um, now I'm staffing, like, 
I was stuck in the in the last one. Okay. Okay. Great. Um. Yes. Like I don't know if I'm going like. I kind of I'm, what, well, I'm walking. As how you say, help me this like. <laughs> Uh, as soon as I start to walk, I know what is coming next. Right, kind of. okay, okay, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm not for sure what it, like, actually, I, I don't think I'm going to stay longer in Wyoming right now. I think the next step now is to go to Arizona. I just heard an interesting quote recently that I love, and it reminded me of what you just said. And, it's, and the quote, I don't, I don't know who said this, but somebody said that God doesn't move parked cars. Mm -hmm. So when you're parked. It's so good. Yeah, it's not good. Think <laughs> about that, you know? Yeah. So you're kind of just what you're saying is that, you know, um, you just start walking and then he just leads you, yeah. you know? But you gotta, you gotta, you gotta step out in faith, first yeah. and foremost. You know, it's not, yeah, so that was good. Um, so are you, do you feel called to, the, to be a pastor? Do you think you'll pursue that in your life? After you're done with YWAM? Or, I don't know. Or worship leader? Yeah, worship or? for sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, worship <coughs> and... Mm -hmm. Singing? Because mm -hmm. I know last night you were playing the guitar. Yeah. Yeah, okay. You sing also? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's for sure. I don't think a pastor. No. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know if I can do it. I mean, if that's what God wants yeah, all for me, like, right. mm -hmm. I, I, just, I just want to do whatever he wants for me. Yeah, amen. Uh, I don't feel it's going to be that. Yeah. But <laughs> yeah. How about you, Julia? What do you feel like God's leading you to in your life? Mm, man, I have so many dreams that I I don't necessarily feel like a specific call yet. Mm -hmm. um, I know that I want to use music to glorify Him, mm -hmm. and I love doing like hands-on ministry stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, one of like something that I'm really passionate about is just this, like the same ministry that Jesus did, like going about preaching the gospel, healing the sick, yeah, just learning to cultivate that as a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So I have things that I'm passionate about, but I don't like feel okay. This is what God's calling me to yeah, necessarily. Right. It's not defined yet. Yeah. yeah, exactly. You know, we can set goals and we should set goals. You mm -hmm. know, when God gives us yeah. little, gives us a little bit of vision, but we do need to to stay open to His leading. Because yeah. sometimes, you know, like the Scripture says, He can do more in us than all we ask or imagine through yeah. His power, right? And so we have these little goals, and you know, and He's got so much more in store for us. So anyway, yeah, stay tuned. Definitely. We're gonna take a break um, in three minutes. Be back. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. You're watching your local television network, TSPN, and now back to Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. Welcome back to Love, Hope, and Faith. It's so good to have you this morning. And I also wanted to direct you, if you've been enjoying this program uh, and you would like to see other programs, other episodes of Love, Hope, and Faith, you can also go to T, uh, um, well, yes, you can go to tspntv.com or you can also go to my blog, my website, which is heathermurdoch.com and I post my blog there. And it's also on YouTube. Thank you, Austin. It's on YouTube <laughs> under um, Love, Hope, and Faith with Heather Murdoch. So there's a variety of ways to catch up on the shows. There's been some great stories that we've been blessed to have here. So. Um, um, anyway, I wanted to find out, you know, we were kind of talking off camera about the brave um, move that your mom made in saying to you at 12, um, mm. you know, it's your choice now. And, and my daughter's 12, and I can't see myself saying that to her, um, although I need to pray about that because maybe it is, you know... Um, I mean, I think it's important that a family makes God a priority. You know, that we, that our family goes to church on Sundays, and that's what we do. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so I, I do feel strong about that. But I, I you know, I, I love to study with her and things at night, you know, with the kids. Mm -hmm. But they're getting to the point, especially her, that she's like, <laughs> oh, Mom, I'd rather be on my phone. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And so there's that balance. So from your perspective as young people, what do you think about how, do you, how does a family effectively lead their kids through faith? What do you say, Mariano? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you got it. You're the one who speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you have You're doing good. experience. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, I think that, well, I'm not a parent. Like, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not a dad, yeah. I will be one day. I yeah. hope so. Yeah. But I think that as a parent, you have to seek uh, the... Uh, the guy of the Holy Spirit to, yes. to raise your kids in the best way because every kid is different, every situation yeah. is different, mm -hmm. every family is different. Yeah. Um, in my case, it was good. Mm -hmm. Like, 
I am, I'm so thankful to my mom that she did that because when you're 12, you just don't want to do what your parents are telling you to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. But if, if your decision to go to church, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, you, true. Mm -hmm. So, but it, it took me three years to, to make that decision to, okay, I want to follow Jesus. Yeah. And during those three years, it was just sadness. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't fun. Yeah. It wasn't like... I think that's also cool because it helps you see for yourself, okay, mm. I need to figure this out for myself instead of depending on someone else's faith to yeah. carry you, yep. someone else's beliefs, mm -hmm. because is it really real anyway if, you're, if it's just because it's from your parents? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good so, point. Yeah, it's good a points. good question. I'll ask. be praying about that. Thank you, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to throw you off a little bit here. I just thought of a great question. <laughs> what has been the hardest part of being a part of YWAM? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> ladies first. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> okay. What, is there one incident that was hard that just um, was, or, or, or an element of it that's hard yeah. for you that God's helped you through? I think it's hard to be away from my family because mm -hmm. I'm really close with my family. Yeah. Um, it's also kind of tough with the whole finance thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just not having that steady income. Right. And schooling and what everybody sees is like what you should be doing. Yeah. Um, so I've really had to come to a point of making the decision that this is, this is the call for me, mm -hmm. or if, I don't know if it would be worth it, because it's hard, like, being a part of YWAM is sacrificial, because you're basically paying to do missions, mm -hmm. so it's like paying to give of yourself. Yeah. But, I mean, I guess that also shows that we're serious about it. <laughs> yes, exactly. And I love it because you're learning at such a young age to totally depend on Jesus. Yeah. That's huge. I mean, it takes most people their whole life to learn that. <laughs> you know, and it's a daily thing, isn't it? I mean, you know, we, we give our will. We, you know, thy will, not my will, Father. You know, yeah. but then you take it back, you know, and then you have to give it to him oh again. Goodness, it's a daily yeah, surrender. Exactly. Or sometimes a minute-by-minute minute surrender, I think. So, mm -hmm. but you're learning that through this process. That's a good thing. Yeah. How about for you? Yeah, I think, like, that's a big thing, like money. Because, mm -hmm. yeah, you just need to trust. But sometimes it's really hard because you're yeah. like, okay, I have to pay rent tomorrow and I don't have any. Like, mm -hmm. it's going to have, like, how are you going to do that? And suddenly, like, the other day, you have the money to pay the rent. Wow. But it, it's not that easy. Like, it's hard. Mm -hmm. You are just... The anxiety that goes with it, huh? Yeah, so mm -hmm. that's hard. Mm -hmm. And just to live by faith and trust in the guy is going to provide. And he does. But I don't know why it's... Yeah, the it's so hard. The challenge every time. Like, even if... Even believe. he does every time, every time, every time he, he provides... But you're still hesitating. I don't know why. Yes, that's how we are, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, so. I know. What's the scripture that's um, Romans 7, 18? Um, I know that nothing good lives in me that is my sinful nature, mm. for I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. Yeah. I do what I don't want to do, yeah. <laughs> right? I do I mean, I you can all relate to that. Yeah. The yeah. Moment, no matter how many times God comes through <laughs> for us, our first thought sometimes is, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, God, are you going to be there for me? Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Um, what kind of challenges, you know, I asked the, the other two um, also this question, but what type of challenges go along with being a young adult? What do you see culturally as the biggest challenge um, in terms of having a relationship with Jesus? Um, For the, I mean, the, the culture meaning your age group. Yeah, I think something huge for the youth, especially with teenage girls, is identity, mm -hmm. and that was the biggest thing for me, even when I was a Christian, just because there's so many demands mm -hmm. and standards that you set for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's on that quest of looking perfect, being perfect, um, performance, yeah. and like God's not about that is the thing. Yeah. And oh, so many people think that He is, which is sad because there's, it's just freedom with Jesus. Um, so I, I think that's a big thing that the enemy tries to use is this performance mindset and um, image 
and just identity. Yeah, I think that's like, huge. Yeah. I think so too. And I think Maria said the same thing, identity, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's the biggest thing that she said she's learned out of this is identity. What do you think? What do I think? The challenges that yeah. the youth face. What do you think about, I guess maybe I could lead you a little bit here. What do you think about the internet and the, yeah, the socialization of going to we go were media? We were talking about yeah. this outside the room. Yeah, yeah. like, <laughs> I think like, it's so, it, it is a good thing, internet, but also it's so sad at the same time. And like how, like you can see wherever you, you are, like all the teenagers are just in their phones yeah. or in the iPod and texting mm -hmm. and like every other five minutes they are just, and it take, I don't know, everything, it's not, it's not anymore about like, um, relationship. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. the word. Yeah. yeah. Everything is through taxes and mm -hmm. I don't, th I don't know, I don't think that's good. But also all the things that you have on the internet, like for a kid right now, it's so hard not to go into bad things, even yes. if they, if you don't want to. It yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I didn't want no. to say the word, but yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know it's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, no, we've, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we've talked about this on the show before. Okay, yeah, yeah it's so, mm -hmm. like, even if you don't want to see that, you, you're on Facebook and you just, like, I know. It's the, right there. Like, everything, even the TV, everything is pulling you to watch those things. And when I was a kid, I'm 32, by the way. I'm, oh, you are? Yeah. Oh, my God, you look 32. <laughs> You're old so man. I, I, I was <laughs> way, my way, in my time. <laughs> like, it was so hard, like, when I was a kid, like, to, to, how do you say, to? Access. Yeah, stuff. to those yeah. stuff. And right now, it's so easy. Oh Even gosh, if you don't want scary. to, you, you can be there. So I think that's really hard now. Yes, yes. And... Yeah. Yeah, and as a parent, I mean, this, you're talking my language. This is my biggest fear, and I have a real fear of, around my children being exposed or exploited through the internet, through mm -hmm. social media. But also, God is bigger than that, mm -hmm. and I want to be live in faith, not fear. Yeah. Yeah. I had an awesome guest on last week. She's a, she's a specialist in this uh, topic, and she actually speaks on a radio show locally in Sacramento, mm -hmm. and she talked about this and how to apply your faith instead of living in fear. Mm -hmm. But it's a real thing that we deal with. I mean, it's absolutely like you said it's just so easy access kids they want they are they're curious they want yeah. to look up something yeah. on the internet and along with that comes videos and pictures and they say that kids now at, you know I don't know the exact statistics but something like the average you know seven or eight year old has seen something on the internet you know what I'm saying wow. I mean I don't yeah. know exactly that age, but something like that yeah. and, and you know Jesus can cleanse all that you know but the shame and guilt that goes along with it and yeah. You know, it's it's difficult. Mm -hmm. So do you guys have boundaries on the time amount of time you spend on your own social media and things or do you do you get drawn into it just like anybody else? And so I mean just spending t texting and, and things like that, I mean. I'm probably the worst about texting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um but I yeah, so I'm guilty. Yeah. Yeah. Guilty as charged. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I think the relationship does get um, sacrificed a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, you have two two people sitting on a couch but, testing each other. You know, but also you have to see the good things. Like I was able to Skype my mom in Argentina on Christmas Day, yes, like to be wonderful. like live, and that's that was amazing. Like we were able to do that, like to be here in Argentina, my family in Argentina, and I'm here in the states, and like being together at twelve. Yes, like, and so it has good things. <laughs> Yeah. But yeah, I, I try not to be that much. But I think, yeah. But I do have filters in my computer, in my laptop. Yes, like, good. Because we're weak. Mm -hmm. And we want to be as far as we can off the edge. Mm -hmm. So I try to do that. So I have filters and in my computer. I don't know, is that how you say it? filters? Yeah, filters. Yeah, filters. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Yeah, yeah, you did that right. Good job. Yeah, I know it's important because guess what? We're all tempted. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and temptation is not the sin. The sin is acting on the temptation, but we're all tempted, so it's good that you have those protections for mm -hmm. yourself, you know, because it just protects ourselves. Yeah. I, I yeah. don't trust myself. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, good. Well, I cannot believe already that we have, like, less than a minute left. Wow. So, when the show's over, <laughs> you guys have been awesome today. All of you have been so good and mm, um, just you. sharing your hearts and, and uh, what, a, what a just amazing... You just never know. I love that about God. You just never know what He's going to unfold in your day. Yeah. I bet you never thought you were going to be on TV. Nope. <laughs> Here, at least. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you so much for being on today. Yeah, thank you. And uh, stay tuned next week. Um, we have a, I have a great show lined up next week. And I just pray. I always pray for the viewers and um, 
pray for the pray for the world that uh, the world may be um, may know the love of Jesus. So um, have a good week. I'll see you next Wednesday. You're watching Amador County's local television network, TSPN. For decades, Manicero Insurance.